guys, it's Gretchen and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, this is based off of comments that I've seen before on pretty much older videos of mine that I've put out regarding Pearson aftercare. And these are just comments that seem to come up again and again saying like, oh, well I used this product when healing a Pearson or I use this product, or can I use this one? And then looking at some of those comments, it's really concerning to see some people using specific products that you definitely should not be using on a Pearson, whether it's new or old, especially if it's new though. So for this video, this is gonna be a quick little run through of five things you should not be using on a Pearson. Now I will tell you ahead of time, the last one I'm going to mention has a little bit of a caveat to it. Just take it as you will, because it does come up in conversation a lot when it comes to Pearson aftercare. So, but we'll get to that one. We're going to save that one for last. So again, this is based off of comments I've seen before. So if you're one of those people that have used these products before and you're going to come into the comment section and be like, oh, it works for me. Cool. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean it worked. It just means your Pearson healed in spite of you using something you shouldn't have, which more power to your body for being able to look past that mistake. So the first thing you should not use on a Pearson, whether new or old, rubbing alcohol. Are we in agreement? You should not use rubbing alcohol on a Pearson. Why? Pretty simple. Rubbing alcohol is extremely harsh. There's just no other way to put it. Rubbing alcohol is an extremely harsh product on anything that you're gonna use it for. It is also incredibly drying. Don't wanna dry out a Pearson, whether new or old, but especially if it's new. Using rubbing alcohol on a Pearson can actually prolong the healing process. Now again, there are probably gonna be some people that come into the comments that are like, I used rubbing alcohol on my Pearson and it healed just fine. Cool. You shouldn't have used it. Your body would just like powered through it. Good for you. Going along the same kind of thought process as rubbing alcohol is hydrogen peroxide. Now, first and foremost, I don't know who would want to put hydrogen peroxide on a Pearson. Just the thought of hydrogen peroxide makes me squirm a little bit just because I think about all the times when I was a child and I like fell off a bike or something like that and I got these scrapes all over my knees. And my mom would take hydrogen peroxide and put it on that scrape and you'd watch it all bubble up and everything like that. and. Ugh, just thinking about it makes my stomach turn. You don't want that on your Pearson. Think of that same reaction to putting it on a scrape from falling off your bike. You don't want your Pearson to bubble up. First of all, ew. Second of all, not good for it. Hydrogen peroxide has pretty similar reasons to why you shouldn't use it as rubbing alcohol did. You know, it's harsh, it's drying. We got that. It also can damage cells surrounding the Pearson. While it could potentially kill any bacteria that's in there, it'll also destroy anything else around it that's good. It would work in the sense that, you know, if you see that your Pearson is getting a little infected or something like that, and you take a little bit of hydrogen peroxide, put it on there, yeah, yeah, it'll kill the bacteria for sure, but you'll also notice that it doesn't necessarily get rid of the infection because it'll prolong the healing process. It's also another incredibly harsh and drying product, but you'll start to notice other things like it has no rhyme or reason. It's like, ooh, you put me on this specific area. Let me spread out a little bit, make sure that I've gotten everything that I'm supposed to, plus a little bit more. It can destroy healthy skin cells surrounding your Pearson. That doesn't sound like a good idea, does it? Next is Bactine or similar products. Bactine is not meant for wounds like a Pearson. Bactine also has, again, very similar reasons to rubbing alcohol and hydrogen peroxide. It is drying, it is harsh, and much like hydrogen peroxide, it can kill healthy skin cells surrounding wherever you put it. There's also the fun little fact that if you go to their website or even look at the product, it literally says, don't use on a Pearson. Literally, go to the website. I'll wait. Don't use Bactine or similar products on a Pearson, especially when the company themselves says, don't use it. And there are people that still use it. Make it make sense. This next one is a fun one, and you'll see why in a minute. Ointments. So ointments like Neosporin, or even things like petroleum jelly, you know, like Vaseline. Don't use this on a Pearson. So why shouldn't you use it? You know, Neosporin is supposed to be a really good healing ointment. Totally get it. I always have Neosporin on hand because I just get cuts all the time. I love Neosporin, but not for a Pearson. So there are a few reasons why you shouldn't use any ointments or petroleum jelly based products on a Pearson. Using such products can actually block oxygen from getting 
to a Pearson. And you may have heard this before, but a Pearson needs to breathe in order to heal. So if you're putting this ointment or this jelly-like substance all over your Pearson, oxygen's not getting in, which it needs to heal. Ointments or petroleum jelly-based products also keep the area wet. Most people use another word, but I refuse to say that because it's one of those words that just gives me the heebie-jeebies and I don't like it. But it starts with an M. If you put it in the comments, I will immediately delete it. You know the word. We all know the word. But it keeps the area wet. You don't want it to be wet. You don't want your piercing to be dry, but you don't want it to be like sopping wet either and damp all the time. That's, that's not good for it. So you don't want to over dry it, but you don't want to over saturate it. Unfortunately, when it comes to healing a piercing, you have to find that fine balance. Right here in the middle, it's a very small space. You've got all this other area that you can't do. And this is, this is the happy spot right in here. It's unfortunate, but it's true. Ointments and petroleum jelly based products can also trap bacteria in. So if you decide to take Vaseline and you put it around your Pearson, if there's any bacteria already in that Pearson, that petroleum jelly has essentially sealed it in so it has nowhere to go other than the Pearson. So this barrier just makes it so that you've basically imprisoned your Pearson to be settling around with some bacteria. That's, that's not good. We don't want that. Much like the other products I've mentioned, it can prolong the healing because it can clog the Pearson. So think about it. You're putting these products around a Pearson. It can actually get in there and clog it up so that it can't do its little movement that it does on its own, that you do not do, that it does on its own. Gives it that ability to breathe, to get some oxygen. If you're putting this jelly-like substance on it, it can't do anything. It's just like stuck. So it can clog it up. It can make it so that it can't breathe, get that oxygen that it needs to heal, further prolong in the healing process. And finally, ointments are used for cuts and scrapes. So again, if you get a cut on your hand, you're gonna use Neosporin, right? You know, it kind of helps speed along the process. Pearson isn't a cut or scrape. It's technically a puncture wound. It's definitely not something that if you fall off a bike, it does not look the same as a scrape on your knee. Ointments are used for those things, not for piercings. All right, so the fifth thing on this list, some of you may see this coming, actually most of you will probably see this coming, despite the fact that I have done videos about its usage before and how it can be a good thing if used correctly and most people don't use it correctly. Tea tree oil, there it is. This is a product that is often talked about within the Pearson community. A lot of people swear by tea tree oil. A lot of people say, don't ever get it near you. I'm one of those people that if you know how to properly apply it, then I say, try it. If you have found that anything else you have done has not worked, but again, a little bit of a caveat, you have to know the correct way to use it. So tea tree oil does have antimicrobial and antibacterial properties to it, which is why people are sitting there going like, yeah, this is a great product to use on Pearson's, especially if you notice any kind of like bump, inflammation or anything like that. I get it. It's got those properties. It just seems like the right thing to use. However, tea tree oil is incredibly strong and harsh on its own. So you have to dilute it. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people will just get that little tiny bottle of essential oil, that's tea tree oil. They'll take like a Q-tip or something, just dunk it right in there and plop it directly onto the Pearson. That's a big no-no. Absolutely do not do that. If you have done that before, stop. Don't do it again. You should never use tea tree oil, correctly or incorrectly, on a new Pearson. This is only reserved for Pearsons that have healed, but Pearsons that have healed and you notice a bump or something similar. So if it is a brand new Pearson that is not completely healed yet, absolutely do not use tea tree oil whatsoever. I don't care your situation, don't use it. This is because of how drying it is, which is the reason why people use it once a Pearson is healed and you notice bumps, because of that drying effect. You still have to dilute it, but it still offers a drying effect. So if you've got a bump, and those bumps are usually some kind of fluid, when you take that tea tree oil, diluted, and put it on it, it helps dry it up, which is what you want because you want the bump to go away. If you just think that your piercing is inflamed, tea tree oil is not it. Only use it if you notice a bump, but again, use it appropriately and correctly. So there are two ways that you can dilute tea tree oil. One is as a rinse. So that's gonna be tea tree oil and water. You're gonna mix the two together. 
obviously you're not going to use a lot of tea tree oil, mostly water, and you're going to use it as a rinse on the Pearson site. Or if you want to go the topical treatment route, you can use it mixed with carrier oils, such as things like olive, vitamin E, or even coconut oil. Mixing it with those, you can take a Q-tip or what have you, use it as a topical treatment where you let it sit for a few minutes, not very long, and then you rinse it off. So you can either do the rinse route where you just kind of like with any saline solution, you know how you just kind of spray it on there and then rinse it off. You can do it that way, or you can use the topical treatment way where you mix it with a carrier oil, put it on there for a few minutes and then rinse it off. With like anything, if you've never used it before, always do a patch test. So with tea tree oil, never put tea tree oil directly on the skin. Don't care what part of your body you're putting it on, don't put it directly on your skin. If you want to do a patch test to make sure that it is fine for you to use and you're not gonna have any kind of reaction, take diluted tea tree oil, find a little spot on you like on your arm, just do like a little tiny patch test let it sit. It should definitely sit for roughly 12 hours. You can't just put it on there, wait 30 minutes and be like, oh, it's fine. Cause sometimes patch tests won't show true results until 24 hours later, but 12 hours minimum. So tea tree oil can be used, but if it's a new Pearson, it shouldn't be used at all. And the only time you should use tea tree oil is if you know how to properly apply it. As always, when it comes to cleaning a Pearson or healing a Pearson, stick with that saline solution that everyone is always telling you about or you're reading about on the internet. You can buy pre-made ones, H2Ocean or Neomed, both have great products. Or you can make your own with one cup of warm distilled water, not tap water, and mix that with one eighth to one fourth of a teaspoon of non-iodized sea salt. Do not go any more than one fourth of a teaspoon. The more salt you use does not mean that it's gonna heal it or clear it up quicker. In fact, it could make things worse. Because at the end of the day, everything is gonna be really harsh unless you know how to use products properly or apply things properly. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on these products, especially tea tree oil. I tell you that is one of the most commonly talked about products when it comes to Pearson aftercare. I am on the fence with it. I have found that it works for me, but I also know how to properly apply it through the means that I've mentioned. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on any of these things that I covered. If there's anything that I may have missed, these are just kind of the ones that seem to come up the most in my comments. People being like, oh, I used hydrogen peroxide on my Pearson. And I'm like, great, so happy for you. Special thank you to my patrons. You can help support the channel on Patreon while having access to videos early, viewing patron only content and more. But that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big ol' thumbs up. Go on down there and hit that subscribe button wherever it may be because I don't know even though I do. This is just my shtick now. Also hit that notification bell in case you want to know when I upload and in case YouTube wants to let you know when I upload because I would really appreciate it. And until next time, bye guys! Mm -hmm.